Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to New Brit Workshop. Not long ago, I made a video showing you the three general purpose woodworking writers made by Festool. Now, the smallest of those three is the OF1010. And I'm going to now give you a product tour of this writer and show you it in action. And let's start by seeing what you get if you buy the set version here in the UK. You get the writer itself, of course. Uh, you get a chip deflector. You get uh, two collets. One is eight millimeter and the other is quarter inch. You get a side fence. You get an attachment which allows you to use the writer on a guide rail. You get an 800 uh, millimeter length of guide rail and you get the Festal ubiquitous uh, plug-it cable. And of course, you also get uh, guarantee information and a product manual. Now the writer itself will spin between 10,000 and 24,000 uh, revs per minute. Uh, the maximum collet size is eight millimeters and it goes down to six millimeters. You cannot use a half inch collet in this writer. Now in order to install the chip catcher, uh, one needs to uh, first of all take a Torx uh, screwdriver and uh, undo uh, these two screws and then you can then install the chip deflector and don't over tighten these screws because it is only going into the uh, metal casting of the base of the writer. And then your chip deflector is there and like all of the Festal chip deflectors it can be turned round uh, to suit uh, your method of work. I'm going to do a cut now using this roundover bit. It's a Festal uh, bearing guided cutter uh, and I'm going to run it down with the bearing on uh, this edge here. Now what I'd like you to notice is just how little dust there was when I did that. In fact I can't see any. I've now put a 10 millimeter twin fluted cutter in here and I'm going to put a uh, groove down uh, this piece of wood uh, about uh, 15 millimeters in from the edge. So I've got the side fence on. Now in order to set the depth it's very simple. I'm going to place my uh, writer on top of the piece of wood and I'm going to do a plunge until the cutter just touches the top of the wood. And then I'm just going to tighten that up for simplicity. And I'm going to drop this down until uh, the, the shaft hits the top of one of these three uh, pillars on the turret. And I then make sure that this uh, little sight gauge here is set in the zero position. Now, if I want to do a cut of uh, a particular depth, let's say it's three millimeters, I'm going to raise this up until I see three millimeters in the sight gauge here. And when I reach that mark, I'm going to tighten the shaft. Now what that has done is created a gap under here of three millimeters. So now if I were to plunge again, and this time I have to do it so that the cutter doesn't touch the wood, there like so, that cutter has now gone down uh, three millimeters below the surface of this wood. And there we are, that's, that's pretty good. I'm very pleased with that. Uh, notice that very little dust came out through the back end. Uh, it, you do often get a lot of dust coming out of the back of a trenching cut, but that was very good. Now I'm about to run a, a, a bearing guide bit down the edge of this piece of wood. And sometimes it's perfectly reasonable to use the chip catcher, which deflects the chips into the uh, normal dust collection uh, port of the router. But it may be that it's better to use a dust attachment uh, like this and it fits uh, using the rails that come with the side fence and then it connects uh, to your hose. And that then uh, makes just a slightly more efficient way of collecting the chips at source. Right, we're going to try the exact same cut, same depth of cut, uh, same type of wood, but this time with the chip deflector uh, and the uh, hose connected in the normal way. Now, although the camera may not have picked it up, uh, I think the dust attachment made a slightly better job. Now, in order to demonstrate the 
guide rail attachment, I've fitted it uh, to the router uh, using the guide rods uh, from the side fence. Uh, supposing you wanted to go at an angle uh, across uh, the surface of a piece of material, uh, so therefore it's at an angle, you can't use the side fence. So the rail is the ideal uh, tool to use. Now to get the depth right, uh, we're going to install this on the rail. The rail's held in uh, place and I'm going to loosen off uh, the uh, not locking knob here and then push down till my cutter is touching the surface of my wood. I'm then going to do the same process again, zero this, and then I'm going to go up the same as before, three millimeters, lock that off, and now when I do a plunge, I'll be doing uh, the depth of cut that I require. And there you can see uh, the cut at the angle uh, across that piece of wood. Right, I'm going to do a, another cut now, but at a different angle. Um, and this time I'm going to uh, show you uh, the use of this little support here. Now, on its own, the router could easily tip a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that support, undo that, push it down, and that just helps to support this end of the router, stops it tipping. And you can see how easy that was uh, using the guide rail. Absolutely super. Now when I'm using a writer on a guide rail, I don't want the cutter uh, to interfere with the splinter guard on the guide rail. Uh, so what I've done is I've made up a, a little template uh, and I've turned everything upside down. Uh, this is where ridge here of the guide rail uh, will fit. And I've got this piece of wood which is the right thickness to go into that slot. And there's a piece of perspex on there. And this edge of the perspex here represents uh, the limit to how close I want that cutter to get to the guide rail. I can have my cutter touching that, but no more. And that distance is exactly 140 millimetres. Now, on this brand new guide rail I have, uh, the distance from this back edge here uh, to there is 139. So that then gives me one millimetre of clearance. And using this system, like so, uh, I can now use the uh, undamaged uh, splinter guard edge of the guide rail uh, to position uh, the rail itself in exactly the right place so I put my cut where I want it. And there it is, just a simple piece of perspex and this little piece of wood, and that's screwed on. Very, very simple. Right, I've set the router up uh, using my template so that that is exactly 140 and I've drawn a line on my uh, piece of uh, work top uh, and I'm able now to judge where I expect the cut to be. That's 139, that's 140, so I've allowed a millimetre here. You saw I had the guide rail sitting on this piece of kitchen work surface, but actually I had it uh, fixed because I didn't want the uh, router weight to make this r rise up slightly. I could have put some more uh, odd ends of this same worktop under each end of the guide rail, which would have stopped that from happening. But I don't have any, uh, so this is a way around it. Now, this is one reason why you really do need to get yourself at least one MFT3, because it really is uh, the most brilliant thing for setting uh, work up like this. Now, you see I've got some holes here and some holes here. And for what I'm going to show you, these holes are not close enough to the wood. I need to get this set up so that the edges here are quite close to holes. And you can do that by just turning this slightly, and you can now see there's a hole there and there's a hole here. And so what I'm now going to do is to thread uh, one of these uh, clamps up from underneath, like so, and just rest it on the surface here, and another one uh, over here. And there it is, resting on the surface. Now I'm going to feed my guide rail onto the clamps, and it's very, very simple to do. Uh, it's easier if you lift the guide rail off the surface of the material so that the rubber on the guide rail isn't trying to hold it in place. 
And there we go. So now we've got the clamps in here, on here, and all we've got to do now is just position this uh, to where uh, we want it for whatever cut we're about to do. So you position it and then go underneath like so and tighten up uh, the two clamps. So that's it, that's now held in place. Underneath here there's the uh, space where the guide rail uh, fits and you'll see a screw here and a screw there. If when you're using this it's a little bit loose on the guide rail uh, then you can tighten uh, these screws until it's just sweetly smooth. Right, the next thing I want to do is to show you how to set up the angle arm and the guide plate. Now these are optional accessories uh, which I would really recommend uh, everyone to get if they're getting uh, one of these writers because it turns this writer into a rather neat edge trimming tool. You just have a look. Now in order to fit this first thing we're going to do is to remove uh, this little support piece here and then we're going to fix the angle arm uh, in here and then we're going to attach uh, the uh, guide plate to it and this goes up in here. I've put into the router a rounding over cutter with a two millimeter radius and I've got here a piece of a failed work surface where I started to put an edge on uh, and I broke the edge. So uh, don't worry about that, uh, but I've got a bit of protruding edge to trim off. And so we're going to try and do that using this two millimeter radius rounding over cutter. Now the first thing I've done is to set the depth of cutter such that my rounding over uh, portion of the cutter is going to just uh, kiss that edge and no more. And I've locked that off. And the height is adjusted such that the ball bearing on this cutter is just touching the surface and this plate is flat as well. And that then should give me all the support I need. And that's now locked off. There is also an optional chip uh, deflector uh, that comes with this setup and I'll install that now as well. Now I've found the easiest way to install this chip deflector is to turn the writer uh, upside down. Now this part of the chip deflector is going to fit down inside here uh, and uh, that is roughly how it should go. And there is a clamping arrangement here to clamp uh, the assembly onto the side of the router. Now in order to get this on I've loosened uh, this knob here which allows that adjustment to uh, take place uh, and I've loosened the clamp. And so I can now position the plastic piece in there and I'm now going to move the uh, clamp over and it clamps from the bottom here through to the top of the uh, casting. And I'll tighten that up now. That's tight and satisfy myself that this is in a good position and I'm going to tighten that up as well. So that's that chip deflector fully home. I can now make an adjustment to get that a little bit closer uh, to the cutter. So all I've got to do now is make sure everything's tightened up and in position and we can now give this a try. All I need to do now is just give that a little scrape. This never was a very pretty bit of edge binding because it I have put too much glue on it, but I'll just get rid of that uh, bit of excess glue like so. And uh, actually, cons considering what I had to start with, that's uh, not too bad at all. Well, that's the end of part one of this introduction to the OF1010. Do watch part two, uh, where I'm going to take you through uh, using the trammel with the OF1010 and also how the OF1010 uh, works with the Lee dovetail jig. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.